Alright, let's get this show on the road. Today, as you already know, we're talking about outside linebackers. Alright, our number one outside linebacker plays on the right. <coughs> and we all know him as Julian Peterson. I brought him over from uh, San Francisco last year, coming off a torn Achilles heel, I believe. Some he, Coming off some major injury. Couple question marks around him, but he did a fantastic job. I, I was very happy with what he was able to do last year. <clears throat> very happy. Um, 89 tackles, 10 sacks, a pick, 5 passes defended, forced a fumble, recovered a fumble. Just had a great all-around season. Was probably our best player last year. So um, I'm very happy with that situation as long as he can stay healthy. <coughs> He's a dominating force from the outside linebacker spot. He can move to defensive end, middle linebacker, safety, cornerback. Very versatile and fun player. One of my favorites on this team. Other side, Leroy Hill, entering his third year out of Clemson. Underrated part of our defense. Another one of those guys that just goes out there, gets the job done. Lunch pail type of player. <coughs> Rookie year in 2005. He had seven and a half sacks, kind of flew under the radar. Um, part of our Super Bowl run. Last year, he um, increased his tackle count from 72 to 92, but he didn't make very many plays. Only had two sacks, less forced fumbles. <coughs> so um, we'll see what happens to him. A, lar a big reason that he didn't make very many plays is because we had Peterson focusing on the playmaking part and letting Hill and Tutupu just do the more ordinary things that a linebacker does, like get tackles. So I'm happy with Hill. We'll see what he evolves into fully this year. I think we're going to see his true colors this year. Is he a playmaker or more of a run-stuffing kind of outside linebacker? So that's a very good starting situation. I like both those guys a lot. Um, behind them, the first guy off the bench would probably be <coughs> Kevin Bentley uh, spent three years with Cleveland, and then we signed him in 2005. Um, he's mainly a special teamer, gets on the field every now and then to play, but um, I'm actually pretty happy with him as far as uh, backups go. I, um, I remember sometimes we would use four linebackers and he would come onto the field. Um, that's very rare, though. He's obviously a solid special teamer. I think he can play a little bit of gunner, so I'm pretty happy with that. And I think the other guy we have, even though he's coming off a pretty severe injury, is, uh, Didi Lewis. Um, um, I don't know much about him, but he used to start for us. He started before we signed Julian, so... Um, I'm definitely cool with him coming off the bench. Then you got, um, Marquise Cooper... Uh, Lance Laurie, that rookie we just drafted. Uh, Michael Bulwer might move to outside linebacker, so we got good depth there. Quite a few guys I trust. And the two starters, our future superstars, our current superstars even in the case of Julian. So I'm going to go ahead and give this spot an A-, minus, and I'm going to give it an A- minus simply because Peterson is still coming off that severe injury. I'm not completely comfortable with it quite yet. I need to see it for another year. And Hill has missed one game in each of his first two seasons because of a minor injury, so he needs to clean that up, and um, we'll see what we get out of him this year. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about outside linebackers all across the league. In a 4-3 defense, you got two outside linebackers that play on either side of the middle linebacker behind the defensive line. <coughs> usually in, in between the end and tackle in front of them, respectively. Um, they have several jobs. If the tight end, if a tight end lines up on their side, or a uh, running back goes out to catch a pass on their side, they're expected to be able to cover him. So you expect them to be able to cover man-to-man. -man. Sometimes you might play like a cover two defense and expect them to play zone. Um... <coughs> You, you expect them to be able to stop the run. Um, you know, get after the guy carrying the ball, 
get tackles for loss, get tackles, don't miss them. Um, you're also expected to be able to blitz the quarterback um, whenever you're sent on one of those. Sometimes you even have your outside linebacker move to defensive end. Um, some of the more versatile outside linebackers in the league play more like all-around great defensive players, like, for instance, Adelius Thomas frequently moves to cornerback or safety or wherever he's needed <coughs> to make the biggest impact in the game. Um, there aren't very many other linebackers that can do this. Another example is, of course, Julian Peterson. So, uh, yeah, that about covers it for 4-3 outside linebackers. Now, for the 3-4, you again got two outside linebackers that play on the outside <coughs> of the two middle linebackers and the three defensive linemen. Usually, 3-4 outside linebackers were defensive ends in college, but they weren't big enough to play defensive end at the pros. <coughs> so they made the... <coughs> I'm sorry. The adjustment from the 4-3 defensive end to the 3-4 outside linebacker. Example of the, examples of this are Sean Merriman, DeMarcus Ware, I believe Joey Porter is another example of that, Willie McGinnis. What will happen is, most of the time, they're just expected to rush the passer, but they don't get to put their hand down. They play standing up, so they can offer the threat of being able to drop back into a zone or play man-to-man, -man more, much more so than a defensive end. Um, so yeah, basically a 3-4 outside linebacker is a 4-3 defensive end with more athleticism, which is what happened to players like DeMarcus Ware. Now, usually they're going to rush the passer anyway, but they don't have to go at it play after play after play, so they don't get overpowered because of their small size. They can um, exert more of their strength on when they do rush because they know they won't have to do worry about it every play. It assists in defending against the run. Um, you're trying to get a mismatch when that outside linebacker rushes. You want that outside linebacker to be able to get into the backfield without dealing with a blocker, or only having to deal with a running back as a blocker. 3-4 Out, outside linebackers that are particularly good in coverage are a little rare because most of them are just expected to rush, but some good examples would be Joey Porter in Pittsburgh, and uh, DeMarcus Ware, I think, is becoming one of those guys that can cover, rush, and play the run. <coughs> so, um, yeah. That about covers it for outside linebackers. Now, for me, the best outside linebacker in the game right now is Adelius Thomas, just for his versatility. But if you want, from a pure outside linebacker sp perspective, give give me Keith Bullock. Um, okay. Underrated outside linebacker. Hmm. This is tricky. I'm going with D DJ Williams in Denver. Young guy out of the 2004 draft. Has to compete for stats with those two ex with two other good linebackers and good defensive players in Denver. I like him a lot. Um, overrated. Lance Briggs. Uh, I don't think he's enough of a playmaker. I think he's a product of the cover two scheme. If I was Chicago, I would just go ahead and trade him now, get as much value as I can before his pl value starts to plummet. I think you can get a lot for him, get a real steal. Uh, best outside linebacker tandem in the league? Give me Denver. Al, um, Ian Gold and DJ Williams. That is Beasley right there. <coughs> um, and uh, breakout outside linebacker this year? I'm going with Derek Thomas in Kansas City. This guy's been underrated his entire career. Keep an eye on him. And, um, okay, that's about it as far as outside linebackers go. I'm going to just throw a comment out there real quick. Keyshawn Johnson retires to go to work with ESPN. Uh, good for him. Although I was disappointed. I think he could have really played two more years, gotten those 12,000 yards. But numbers isn't everything. I guess he just wanted to go out with some dignity. He was a great, he was a great player. Um, lacked certain skills that most wide receivers in this league have. But I respect him in spite of some attitude issues, and I respect this decision to retire. Good luck, Keyshawn. Sorry you got pushed out in Carolina. See ya. Alright, I'm out.